a logging truck weighing approximately 300 kilonewton was crossing the bridge. With that, Petkolo's timber bridge met its fate on February 17, 2016. Despite the load on the bridge at the time of its collapse being only one third of its design capacity, it failed catastrophically. Let's look into the reason. Hi, I'm Hilal Alam from Al Zibrat. Let's begin with Norway's obsession for timber. Norway has a rich history of using timber in constructions, evident in the 900 year old stave churches that still stand today, along with Viking ships and log houses. Even bridges like Donfoss Bridge built in 1896, Jelton and Quayberg Bridges both constructed in 1906 showcase the country's obsession with timber as a building material. In 1993, the Nordic Timber Bridge program was launched with the aim of enhancing the competitiveness of timber bridges compared to the other materials such as steel and concrete. Why build timber bridges today? Timber bridges are fascinating from a construction perspective due to its simplicity and versatility in design. From economic point of view, it's a widened range of construction materials for increased competition. From aesthetic point of view, new possibility in designs and shaping. Environmentally, low energy consumption, carbon dioxide bonding meaning no carbon emission and renewable materials or desirable advantages of using timber materials for bridge construction. Confidence in wood as a bridge construction material or its load-bearing structure in glue limb, bridge deck in, stress laminate timber and beyond that wood where wood is advantageous, steel where steel is advantageous and concrete where concrete is advantageous. Protection measures are aimed at 100 years service life. A typical construction element in modern Norwegian timber bridges are glued laminated members, stress laminated timber decks, slotted in steel plates, steel cross girders. With slotted in steel plates, truss with glue limb members are joined and this is the hero of our case study today. Let us see how Percolo timber bridge was constructed. Both sides, the supports should withstand the axial force of the bridge. On the supports, lower cords sit, it's known as glue limb truss. I section crossbars support the cords along span length at varying intervals. Above the lower cords, web members are constructed to support the upper cord. From the I sections, cables are connected to the web members to hold the I section. Along the span, stress laminated timber decks SLTD are laid. The SLTD of 5 meter wide functioned as a roadway. The span of the bridge was 47.5 meter and was designed in accordance with Euro codes. In this design, the upper cords support the entire vertical load of the bridge. The horizontal loads are supported by the lower cords axially. It was first opened for traffic in October 2015 for one way. On 17th of February 2016, while a logging 300 kilonewton truck was crossing the bridge, it collapsed. Why did it collapse? Let's begin with the axial force along the lower cord. As a vehicle enters, the axial forces keep building between the truss joints. Let's zoom into the exact location where the failure occurred. When designing a node of a truss, the difference in axial force between the left and the right hand side of the node governs the thickness of the connector to connect members or number of the connectors to connect the members. At the circled zone, the height from the upper cord to the lower cord of the truss was about 4.3 meter. It acted as a lever arm at that particular location where the bending moment reached its maximum. The bridge was designed to withstand about 1 ton but buckled under 300 kilonewton. The investigation undertaken after the collapse determined that main cause was severe error concerning the design of the butt joint located in the bottom cord of the truss. Let's zoom into the exact location where failure occurred. As the truck entered, the axial force was building up as usual. When it reached the point where the bending moment would be the maximum, the connectors that act as a lever arm were present. They were designed to take this load as n is equal to n a minus n b 
meaning the difference in axial force between the left hand and right hand side of the node. This is true only if the truss cord is continuous. In the case where continuity is interrupted as in Percolo bridge, the number or thickness of connector should be determined based on the maximum force in the member. That is N is equal to maximum of NA or NB. But the design engineer took N is equal to NB minus NA rather than the axial force of the maximum of NA or NB. The engineer designed for continuous truss cords which Percolo bridge was not. The hell broke loose. The similar incident happened with Hyatt Regency walkway design. As Henry Petrovsky quotes, it was repeated 3000 years ago, 300 years ago, just 30 years ago and will likely to be repeated even today. An engineer cannot sit and think of all possible failures but can learn from case studies from sources such as algebra. Please spread this channel among professionals and engineering students and we will meet in next video with interesting case studies. Thank you very much.